exercise is very, you know, very important for overall brain health. You want to keep your brain healthy or rescue it if it's headed to the dark place. You have to prevent or treat the 11 major risk factors that steal your mind. Low blood flow is the number one brain imaging predictor of Alzheimer's disease. It's associated with depression, ADHD, and schizophrenia. You need to keep your blood vessels healthy, pliable, and working right. Exercise is very, you know, very important for overall brain health. Your diet matters and your level of exercise matters and the right. supplementation matters and giving people medication. And I'm not opposed to medication, right. but once we start them, they're insidious in that they change your brain to need them in order for you to feel normal. When you're doing all those ancillary things and it's still kind of, you still have anxiety, you still have AD, ADHD, when you have all these other things still creeping up, is that when you start, is that when you start like implementing medication when it's not, or is it all just like, it's all relative, right? Like you could be at a 10 and then you start doing these things and you get down to a six and that could be good enough. Well, it's only good enough. You know, I think people should see us at Amen Clinics when their mood, their feelings, their behavior, or their thinking is not what they want and not getting them to the goals they have. Relationships, work, money, right. physical, emotional, spiritual health. When, when you feel like there's something blocking, you. Now, 20% of the people who see us, they have no problems. They just want a better brain. It's like, right. okay, brain health is the most important part because without my brain, I'm not me. And so about 20% of people just come because they want to know and they want to plan to optimize it. Most people come because they want to feel better. And uh, you think of medication when you've done the things you can do um, that I talk about in the end of mental illness, like your thyroid's right and your vitamin D is right and your testosterone level right. is right and your hemoglobin A1C is right. It's like you, your physiology is good and I still feel anxious. Then one, you know, we'd think of something like GABA calming to settle that down or theanine. And if we're still not making progress, then it's like, here are medication options. But it is 10th on the list as opposed to first on the right. list. Can we just talk then about just optimizing someone's brain a little bit? Because you're saying that could be, that's 20% of your business, right? A lot of people who are hackers or just overall high performers or whatever want to optimize their brain. Um, what are some, I, I did, I, I did see one thing that you said that I thought was very interesting that people who play racquetball or any racket sport, they tend to, um, they tend to live longer, their blood flows better. Therefore it's very helpful. The coordination sports helps to optimize your brain, right? Is that why the racket is so good? Can, can you talk about that and give me some other tangible ways people can optimize their brain health? So if we think of the mnemonic I have in the end of mental illness, it's called bright minds. You want to keep your brain healthy or rescue it if it's headed to the dark place. You have to prevent or treat the 11 major risk factors that steal your mind. Mm -hmm. And when it comes to coordination exercises like racket sports, um, the B in bright minds is for blood flow. Low blood flow is the number one brain imaging predictor of Alzheimer's disease. It's associated with depression, ADHD, and schizophrenia. You need to keep your blood vessels healthy, pliable, and working right. And um, the low blood flow scans we see, it just goes with ADHD, brain fog, depression, and so on. 
And so it means you have to keep your vessels healthy. You do that with exercise. Exercise, yeah. And you also do it with, you avoid things that hurt them. So caffeine, nicotine, um, alcohol, high blood pressure, any form of vascular disease, you need to take that seriously. Right. Um, and things like exercise, beets, oregano, rosemary, um, help increase blood flow and certain supplements like ginkgo. Um, so, you know, one of the 11, you're just thinking, oh, my diet matters, exercise matters. Okay, most people know that. The R is retirement and aging. When you stop learning, your brain starts dying. So new learning should be part of everything you do. And oh, by the way, you should know your ferritin level. Ferritin is a measure of iron storage. If your ferritin is low, you're going to be anxious and look like you have ADD. And if your ferritin is high, it's associated with premature aging. So know your important health numbers. So with blood flow, we talked about blood pressure. With aging, we talked about ferritin. The eye is inflammation. When your body's inflamed, um, you have mental health issues uh, because your brain becomes inflamed and you're anxious or you're sad. And inflammation can come from low levels of omega-3 fatty acids. It can come from gum disease. Um, it can come from a leaky gut. It um, can come from processed foods or fast food diet. And taking omega-3 fatty acids, flossing your teeth, um, taking probiotics, all of those things can help quell inflammation. Um, the G is genetics. What, what's in your family? Because right. we just tend to be vulnerable to that. The genes aren't a death sentence. They should be a wake-up call to get healthy. The H is for head trauma, a major cause of mental health problems that nobody knows about because most psychiatrists never look at the brain. And how right. would you know if that accident, you got thrown out of the car at three years old, mattered if you didn't look? And, and the literature on head trauma is so clear. I didn't make this up. Head trauma, right. undiagnosed head injuries are a major cause of homelessness, depression, suicide, panic attacks, ADHD, learning problems. And so a strategy is always protect your head. And so when my kids want to go snowboarding, I'm like, no, bad idea. Because you're just right. more likely to have a concussion. When they want to play tackle football, it's like, no, it's not going to happen. Uh, <laughs> because How old are your kids? Um, my youngest is now 16. And oh, I have no. grandbabies from two to... 10 and I oh, adore wow. them, but they're not playing football. Right. Uh, you know, I think that's, you know, neglect or abuse, depending mm -hmm. on how you define it. But on average, kids have a concussion every year they play football. That you should never be okay wow. with them. The T in Bright Minds is toxins. Alcohol is not a health food. Marijuana is not going green. Both of those are directly toxic to brain function, but there's a whole bunch of other things that are toxic. General anesthesia is toxic for some brains. Um, the product. Lots of lipstick. You, I'm sorry. Lipstick can be toxic. Sixty percent of the lipstick sold in the United States has lead in it, so yeah. I call it the kiss of death. <laughs> <laughs> um, and now yeah. we're, you know, in this pandemic. And, you know, people are lathering their bodies with these antiseptics, which are just oh. loaded with toxins. Um, I know. I'm just totally, you, you know, I'm a fan of green products because, you know, the soap can kill COVID, but you don't want all the other things you can't pronounce on your skin because whatever goes on your skin yeah, exactly. goes in your body and affects your body. Yeah. You said, okay, a couple of things you just said, the ferritin that you mentioned, because I don't think m many people have heard of that. What is that? How do people get tested for that? So it's a measure of iron storage in your body. And is that like a normal blood test? Can you go to just any a doctor? Normal blood test, ferritin level. Um, 
and people who are low, anxious, ADD, tired, can't sleep. People who are high, premature aging. So if you're low, you need to take iron. And red meat is probably okay, you know, sustainably raised red meat. And if you're high, you need to donate blood. So I'm always high. It runs in my family. So I donate blood twice a year. And it keeps it at a high level. And you and then you said for inflammation, well, a couple of things. The the gut, you're you kind of touched upon it with gum disease. But um the other thing is what's the what's the correlation between gut health and brain health? They're completely connected. Right. And if your gut is not right, say you had a lot of antibiotics when you were a child, because you have lots of ear infections and it really damaged the microbiome, a hundred trillion bugs in your gut, then you may be chronically anxious the rest of your life because you have an unhealthy um, microbiome in your gut. So just think of the microbiome as the bug population where all of us have about a hundred trillion bugs in our gut and they make right. our transmitters, they detoxify our food, they help us with digestion. Um, and if they're not healthy, you feel terrible emotionally. And right. almost all functional medicine doctors start by improving the health of your gut, which you need to do with your diet. And, right. you know, people have heard of probiotics. A lot of people haven't heard of prebiotics. That's actually eating fiber to feed the probiotics. You got to take care of the bugs in your gut by feeding them right and stop poisoning them. Alcohol right. poisons the microbiome. Yeah. I mean, I, I mean, I feel like it's becoming much more known about the gut health at the brain, the brain and gut connection. But, you know, what's interesting about you is like, I feel like you're like a combination of a functional doctor and, and a and a brain doctor, right? Because you do a lot of the same things that a functional doctor would look at. 